Hi, you all. Welcome to Geneva's Tutoring, where I am here to assist you with studying for your counselor's exam. So today we're going to go over human growth and development. It's going to be a 15-question in-depth review where we're going to identify key words, being able to comprehend the information, and so that we can choose the best answer. Let's go. Hey, you all. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for spending time to be here. So I was going back and forth with trying to determine how I want to do this and like we can work together even though we're not live. So I decided to just do a quiz um, and do the first couple of maybe questions or so, just see how many we can get to. So I'm thinking maybe like 10 to 15 questions that we can go over and then you can use these codes here on the quiz. They are still active. I didn't set a deadline, so you can see no deadline here. And you can just do the quiz with me. And we can just like go like we're one to one together, okay? So I will give you time to pull up your quiz on your app or your computer. And it's called Q U I Z Z I Z. You put it in the internet or your phone, you can download the app, you put this code in, and you'll start. Now, because you aren't here in this area, that's fine. You will you will populate on your phone or your computer, whatever you're using, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you need to pause this, do so. Get the quiz ready to go, and then just unpause it when you're ready to start. But if you're already ready, let's go. Boyd's stages are psychosexual, while Eric Erickson's stages are. I want you to identify what the question is asking you. If you even forget about these stages for Freud, and you look at Eric Erickson, the, the, the question is asking, what are Eric Erickson's stages? We all know Freud's psychosexual. So let's look at the options. Because I like to do the process of elimination, and I like for you to go over the information so that it can make sense to you. And sometimes using it in a sentence can be really helpful. So you can go in a sentence with Eric Erickson's stages are psychometric. Well, what do we know about psychometric? Hmm. Psychometric is statistics, right? It's Eric Erickson's stage. Uh, talk about statistics? Nah, nope. So then we're going to go to option two, psychodiagnostic. Even if we didn't know what this term meant, are we diagnosing someone in Eric Erickson stages? No, we aren't. So next we have psychopharmacological. Now that's a pretty big word, <laughs> but you could think about pharmacy, medicine, psychotropic medicine. We all know that that is definitely not Eric Erickson. He does not talk about anything like that in his stages or describe his stages like this. Okay, so then it leads up with D, and D is psychosocial. So the correct answer is going to be D. And then it gives you some information to read here. You think about psychometrics, like I said, testing and measurement. Let's look at this term. Uh, psychopharmacy studies that affects of drugs that have on psychological functions. So psychopharmacology is what it is. All right, let's get to number two. Also, keep in mind, the goal of this is to do the process of elimination. And once you do the process of elimination, we usually I go for the first two, and then we see the possible answer, and we want to choose the best answer in between those two lists left. All right, let's get to the next one. Ego psychologists. Okay. Now, what do we know about ego psychologists? If you think of ego, you probably think of like Freud, of course, because he talks about the ego, super ego, right? And ego. So, 
if you were looking at option A, which is number one, emphasizes it processes. Okay, but what does that even mean? Emphasize it processes. So, eh, we can go for maybe that's a possibility. Now look at choice two, refute the concept of superego. Now, will any ego psychologist refute the concept of superego? No, definitely not Freud. He talks about it. So then we go to C, are sometimes known as radical behaviorists. Okay, what do we know about radical behaviorists? Can you think about it? So we're looking at ego psychologists, we're talking about the unconsciousness, the mind, the construct of the mind. So we definitely can't be talking about behaviorists where that's dealing with behavior. Even if you didn't know what the, the question was completely asking, you can look at the keyword and behaviorist and know that that does not correlate with ego psychologists. So now we just have choice D. So then we go to believes in man's reasoning, man's power of reasoning to control behaviors. Okay, let's click on which one. We are correct. Okay, so we take a look at the explanation that's located in the book. If you don't have the book, uh, feel free to email me and I can send it out to you. You can email me at morethanatherapist22 at gmail.com. But we're looking at the explanation here and we just already went over this already. We talk about the, the ego is a logical, rational, and utilizes the power of reasoning and control to keep impulses in check. That's why we chose option D, okay? The only psychoanalyst who created a developmental theory that encompasses the entire lifespan was. What do you think the key words in here are? In this exact statement, we're not even looking at the options. Who can you think of as a theorist who encompasses the entire lifespan? Key statement, entire lifespan. Let's go over these options. Eric Erickson, what do you know about Eric Erickson? Did he cover the whole lifespan? Okay, yeah, for sure. But let's go through all these other options as well. Talk about B. Milton Erickson. What do you know about that? So if we talk about Milton H. Erickson, not to be confused with Eric Erickson, of course, uh, he talks about brief psychotherapy and innovative techniques in hypnosis. So if you think of the H, in his name, you could think of hypnosis and you'll completely just eliminate that. Next, we're gonna talk about A.A. A. Brill. And if you think about it, A.A. A. Brill is an analytic and will be discussed later on in this chapter, but we'll, we'll go into it, of course, later in detail. But then you have Jean Piaget, okay? What do you know about Jean Piaget? Okay. John Piaget is the leading name in cognitive development in children, right? So he talked about every stage has to be successfully completed in order for one to move to the next stage. And these theories will go over more and more as we go into the rest of these questions. So the answer is Eric Erickson. Eric Erickson, he talks about the stages all the way to death, okay? Um, and he developed his theories um, in cahoots in a sort of way of expanding on Sigma Freud's psychosocial, okay? And if you don't know what those stages are, I definitely will be able to give you the information. If I can put it in the description box for you to go over, but if not, feel free to look over that information, okay? The statement, 
The ego is dependent on the id, but most likely you reflect, reflect the work of who? Okay. Now we've been talking about the id, ego, super ego, and who that relates to, but let's go down all the options. We talked about Eric Erickson. He's a psychosocial, not psychosexual. He did not agree with Sigmund Freud about his understanding of the construct of the mind with aggression, innate ability to be aggressive, and the sexual urges towards the opposite parent. So B, we have Sigmund Freud. And if you think about the key word here, ego and it, you automatically would know it's Sigmund Freud. Okay. Jay Haley. Um, and then we also have Arnold Lazarus, which we'll talk more about in the up and coming chapters. But if you want to talk about it now, let's go over it. Arnold Lazarus is considered the pioneer in the behavior of therapy movement, especially in regards to the use of sym symptomatic desensitization, a technique that will help clients cope with phobias. Okay. So if you didn't know that, I would say definitely make sure you write that down. Then you have Jay Haley is known for his work in strategic and problem-solving therapy, often, often utilizing the technique of paradox. Okay. Now, I don't remember, I don't, well, I don't expect you to remember everything that we talk about, but I do want you to identify keywords and concepts. So if you think of Jay Haley, you'll think of the paradox and strategic and problem solving. Then you have Arnold Lazarus. He talks about um, systematic desensitization. That's it. You want to identify those keywords, okay? Then you have Sigmund Freud with the id, ego, super ego. You have Eric Erickson. Uh, who talked about the full life development, and he also talks about the eight stages of that, and he's psychosocial, okay? So the answer here is Sigmund Freud. Pretty lengthy, but I'm not going to read it because we went over it, so let's skip to the next question. I am in the league with myself. <laughs> All right. Jean Piget, ideographic approach, created his theory with four stages. The correct order from stage one to four is what? Now, here is a method that I use in order to remember them in order, but I'm going to give you time to see if you can get this correct. I'll give you a couple more seconds. All right, so I use a mnemonic way to remember this in order, and there's also other ways you can think about it too. But I use this sentence some people can fly. Okay. Some people can fly. So if you're looking at the first letter of each word, then you'll get the correct answer. And that correct answer is here. Okay. So in PJ, if you can't remember, he talks about the stages that we go through. Sensory motor, you think of sensors, and you think of all this stuff that you're thinking about is from birth and up. Um, for those students who go all the way to the end, like Eric Erickson, there's some that only go to teenage adolescence, like uh, PJ, um, and then also Sigmund Freud. And these are things you should be able to identify the keywords with each. There is, okay? And you can pause and read this explanation. Some behavioral scientists have been critical of Swiss child psychologist Jean Piaget's developmental research because. Let's go through the options. Keyword criticize, okay? And of course, Jean Piaget, because this is what we're talking about. His work has been criticized because he utilized a T-test too, too frequently. Did he talk about T-tests, John P.J.? Mm, no, we're not talking about statistics. Okay, let's go to B. He failed to check type 1 or alpha errors. Yet again, we're still not talking about statistics. He, didn't, he doesn't mention that in his work at all. 
he worked primarily with minority children. Now, we know this work was done around 1900s, and there, a lot of the research that was done has been with uh, those uh, white descent, and it's been done with upper class, um, rich individuals. And at this time, PJ did not work primarily with minority children. So we're gonna scratch that one out. Okay, so D, his findings were often derived from observing his own children. And that is true. Do you wanna take some time to read this information? Then let me know. Yes, you can definitely pause, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. A tall, skinny pitcher of water is emptied into a small, squatty pitcher. A child indicates that she feels the small pitcher has less water. The child has not yet mastered. Okay. And I always go back to a story where my brother used to try to pour me a cup. And he would give me a taller, skinny cup. And he would get a bigger, wider cup. And for me, I would think because the cup that I'm getting is taller, I think I'm getting more, but I'm actually not. Okay. So. The key word here has not yet mastered and thinking that I have um, less water, okay, in this scenario. If you remember John P. J.'s uh, development, then you'll be able to think about which, which key word here. So symbolic schema, what do you know about symbolic schema? So symbolic scheme is how we make sense of the world, how we label things that we see, like a spoon is for eating. We give meaning to things that, that are around us. Okay. Conservation. If you know about conservation, <laughs> then you already know that this could be a possible answer because conservation talks about volume and mass. Okay. So then you have next to see androgynous psychological issues. Just by looking at that, you should automatically know that's the no, okay? PJ does not talk about that at all in his research. Then you have trust versus mistrust. And who do we know that is for? Eric Erickson. So now we just have, you could possibly say it's A and B, right? But if you're talking about a child being able to understand that the actual drink has less water versus having more, and you're talking about volume and mass, then you're talking about conservation. Because the child is not trying to make sense of the cup. The child has not mastered understanding that the tall pitcher of water the volume of mass still stays the same no matter what is in any kind of cup. So for example, if I pour a cup of water, the same amount from the same cup into another glass, into a bigger or smaller glass, it's the same amount of water, it hasn't changed. So you think of conservation, you think of no change for C, okay? All right, I think I still need to skip the question, so but it was conservation. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we're gonna talk about this next one. In Piagentin literature, conservation would most likely refer to, and we just talked about this, did we not? You should automatically know what this answer is, okay? Come on now, come on, come on, come on, pick the right one. <laughs> it's gonna be volume and mass. Conservation talked about volume and mass, understanding, how that looks like that um, some things do not change just because it's in a different kind of cup or different area or anything of like that, okay? Defense of the ego, we all know that will be Sigmund Freud. The sincere, sensory intelligent stage, no, that's not a thing. We have the sensory motor stage, which is in the beginning of PJ's um, development, but that's not it. A specific psychological stage of life, Makes no sense, okay? So of course it's gonna be volume and mass. Okay. Okay. 
a child master's con conservation in the pigeon stage known as keyword master's conservation okay now if you know the order some people can fly um and pj stage goes all the way up to uh, the last one, which is formal operation, which is 12 years and older. Uh, sensory mode is at birth, pre-operational is two to seven, and concrete operation, okay? If you do not know how, how to do any of these or remember any of the concepts that ring a bell, you think of conservation, right? The C-O-N, same thing in concrete. Conservation, concrete, or concrete conservation. They both have C-O-N, okay? So you're able to understand that having concrete conservation is the answer, even if you don't know all of the options and keywords. Bank expanded on PJ's conceptualization of moral development. Okay. What's the key word here? I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. All right. Moral development. That's the key word here. Now, with one of these theories, even if you didn't know exactly who expanded with on PHAs. If you know your theorists, at least the keywords of more development, who you relate that to in the options? Will you relate more development to Eric Erickson? Do you talk about more development? No. Lev Joski, if you don't know anything about him, you possibly could think about that. That could be an option. Then you have Lawrence Kohlberg. What do you know about Lawrence Kohlberg? And then you have John B. Watson. Okay. So if you had to choose, which one would you choose? I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay. So let's talk about Lev Vajoski. You know about Eric Erickson. Okay. So Lev Vajoski disagreed with PHA's notion that developmental stages take place naturally. Vajoski insisted that the stages unfold due to educational intervention. Okay. He felt that kids, when we go to school, our development is not in its most natural state. Pretty simple. That's it. Okay. You have John B. Watson who um, is the father of American behaviorism. And if you don't know about John B. Walton, um, he talks about the idea that um, we learn from experiences and that we learn phobias, okay? So if you're looking at the answer here, it's not with more development with John B. Watson, Lev Vygotsky, Eric Erickson, then the answer would be Lawrence Kohlberg. Okay. And take time to pause and read this. All right, now we're going to go to the next one. Okay. According to Jean PJ, a child masters the concept of reversibility in the third stage, known as concrete operations or operational thought. This notion suggests. Now, where are the keys, keywords here? Give you a couple of seconds to get it. 
And then if you actually do have any of these keywords, you can write them in the comments. Just let me know your thoughts. All right, let's talk about it. So keyword here is reversibility. And we took and concrete operation. Okay. So reversibility, what does that mean? Reversibility means that things can go back to exactly the way they were. Okay, it's not permanent. So reversibility, even if you just want to even look at that, you can look at it as you try to understand the word by looking for the definition in the or the, the options for the answer. Okay. So is reversibility defined as the heavier the objects are more difficult for a child to lift it? No. Mm -mm. What about the child is amb ambidextrous? Nope. The child is more cognizant of mass than weight. We talked about that with volume and mass. We talked about with that with conservation, but that's not it in this case. We're not talking about conservation. We're talking about reversibility. Un can undo an action, hence, an object, say a glass of water, can return to its initial shape. That is the definition of reversibility. Let's click on it. Ta-da, and we are right, okay? Sometimes um, if you see a word, the definition is what you're looking for in the answer. So you can read it off as reversibility and then read off whatever's for A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we're gonna do the last one here. Um, during a thunderstorm, a six-year-old in the PJ stage of pre-operational pre thought, stage two says, the rain is following me. This is an example of. Now, what do you think of the keywords here? Okay, let's talk about it. So keyword here is me. Me, right? When you think of me, I'm thinking about myself. It's I, I, I. I'm not thinking about anyone else. And when you think about that, the first thing you should come to your mind is ego. Okay? But let's go through all the options, just in case you didn't know. So egocentrism. Keyword, ego. Egocentrism means to be self-centered, to not be able to think about others' uh, feelings or thoughts or anything like that because you only see your perspective. Conservation, we talked about earlier, it's volume and mass, right? That's not it here. We're not trying to find out that information. Concentration, we're not concentrated on one thing versus everything that we could possibly see means to be fixated or something. And then we're not talking about abstract thought here. Okay, so keyword here, like I said, it's me and it's egocentrism. You could think about it, the M and the E being an actual word egocentrism. Even if you just saw ego, you think of ego, you think of I, me. Okay. Right, let's do one more. I just, I just feel like I want to do one more. <laughs> All right. Lawrence Kohlberg suggested. Now, I can't give you the answer here, but if you didn't know who Lawrence Kohlberg is, if you um, were able to try to choose which one, which instinct, which instinct would it tell you to pick? Which one would it tell you to pick based on your own actual instinct? A single level of morality? Two levels of morality? Three levels of morality? Pre-operational thought as the basis for all morality. Okay. So if you look up Lawrence Kohlberg and you remember his keywords, um, in the uh love the, the three levels and six steps. So Lawrence Kohlberg talks about moral development. Okay. He has three levels and six steps. Mm 
I'm going to go to 15 and then I'm going to end it. <laughs> All right. The highest dilemma is the Kohlberg's theory asks. Now, what do you know about the highest dilemma? So the highest dilemma talks about uh, if it's in with Kohlberg's idea of how to measure someone's moral development. He gives a story of a husband and a wife. The wife is sick. She needs this medicine. She's not getting any better. And then if he does not get his wife this medicine, she's going to die. So the guy goes to the pharmacy and tries to get the medicine, but the pharmacist will not give it to him because he can't afford to pay for it. So then he goes back later when it's closed and he steals the medicine. Okay. So you're going to be asked this vignette to see what your moral development is, what you feel like what he did was completely wrong, this person should be arrested, et cetera, or you think that what he did was right because he made his own rules and he decided to live by his own standards. He didn't care about law enforcement and getting in trouble. His goal was to help his wife, okay? But even if you didn't even know the highest dilemma, okay, if you're looking at Colbert's theory, we say he has three levels and six steps. We're trying to look at this as a concept of what, what the answer is going to be, like a metaphor. So with Colbert's moral level of development with three levels and six steps, is that like a reference to a brick to a house? Mm. It could be because bricks go up in levels, right? You have, you know, the higher the bricks, the higher the level. You think about a house has levels to it, you know, could possibly be. Freud to Jung, there is no correlation there, <laughs> okay? Um, so they're both like in the theorists, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about something that's just not based on theories alone. So then you have the Meninger Clinic is to biofeedback. Even if you didn't know what the Meninger Clinic is, biofeedback is what is used to um, assess how much anxiety or trauma has on your body and it's recorded. But we're not talking about that. For bio, you think of biology. We're not talking about biology with Colbert's theory. We can't even relate that to, to that at all. So then you have D. A typing test is to the level of typing skills mastered, okay? Now, if you're looking at D, you're looking at keywords, keyword is level. We said Kohlberg has three levels and six steps. If a person is having a typing test, there's different levels to the typing test that you can master, right? You get better, 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 better. Same thing with Heinz and Lemma. You go up those steps, imagine it's different levels to those steps, level one, level two, and level three, and same as typing. So the choice, the, the best choice would be between A and B would be D. Because of the keyword here, level, right? It's, it's giving more defined information that's relevant to Colbert's theory of moral development. Last one here. The term identity crisis comes from the work of. Okay. Now, this is the work of M. I literally just told you, but we're just gonna go through it together, okay? Um, so I can use some clues. This this theorist stages of development goes all the way from birth to death. Okay. There's identity crisis as well as midlife crisis within these, these stages of development, okay? Now, let's look at choice A. Counselors who stress RS involvement, involvement issues with clients. Automatically, you just like, you know, that's not even nowhere near close because it doesn't make any sense, right? Um, Eric Erickson, do you know if he talks about identity crisis and at what stage does he do it? You had Alfred Adler. Um, what do you know about Alfred Adler?
So Alfred Adler is the father of individual psychology, okay? Does he talk about identity crisis? He, he talks about in, inferior inferiority, like organ inferiority, right? But he doesn't talk about that. He doesn't talk about identity crisis, okay? And then you have Carl Jung, okay? Do you know about Carl Jung? Jung talks about the archetypes, right? And he talks about universal concept ancestry, okay? So if we know it's not A, we know it's not D or D, and we're going to talk about Eric Erickson. And Eric Erickson is a right choice. Okay. So if you want to pause it here and you want to be able to look at these options, you can do that as far as the explanation. But I am going to end it here for the night. I hope this has been very, very helpful just to go over the 15 uh, questions and then. Soon, I'll be posting more videos um, within the next chapter. The next chapter, I'm going to go over at least the 15 questions would be, let's see, social and cultural diversity. Okay. So the video is going to be linked right up here at the top of the screen. You can go over those 15 questions with me. Um, if you don't have that book for, um, for Rosenthal, um, feel free to click in the description box and I can provide that for you, the PDF for the, for the fourth edition. And the code, like I said, it'll be good until, um, definitely, I have never turned it off. So you can always come back and just test yourself on those 15 questions. And then we'll go from there and I'll see you in the next video. We'll talk about social and cultural diversity. All right, thank you for spending some time with me tonight. And I hope this session has been good. If you have any suggestions or any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Okay, and have a good night. Make sure you like and subscribe.